Okay, we're going to explain the notation that we use and we'll start looking at just the observations. And for now, these don't have to be thought of as realizations of random variables. These are just, just data that we could fit lines to. We don't need statistical models or anything to work with the data. And essentially you'll find that we're going to use the notation such that n is the number of individuals for whom we have some data. And there's an asymmetry in the variables we're interested in. There's a single variable y. And to let us know which individual this observation has been taken on, we use a subscript i. And i then is an integer that goes from 1 to n. So we therefore have n such observations, and we could write y as a vector, y1, y2, through to yn, and attempting to show that this is a vector in, in typography we'd use bold, here we just use a little underscore um, to tell us that that's a vector. We then have a whole set of observations called X and we'll denote this as a matrix. The first column of X for nearly all the applications we're interested in is a column of ones. So we could say that X is a matrix made up of a vector X1, where X1 is always equal to 1. We then have at least one other observation on every individual. X1, X2, through to Xn. We could have many more of these on the same individuals. So we're going to use the notation P to refer to the number of X variables, including this variable X1, which is always equal to 1. So this becomes X1, 2. So this is vector X2. This is vector XP. And I'm going to say that within J, within X, sorry, I have P columns. And these will be indexed J equals 1 to P. So that's, that's the data that we're working with. We have one row for every individual. We always have one column of Y, but we have P columns in X, including a column of ones. So N is the number we give to the number of individuals, and P is the number of columns in X, which leaves us with Y being an N by one vector, and X being an N by P matrix. Now if all I were doing were fixtures or planes, um, I could write this in a number of ways. I could say that Y subscript I is equal to X subscript I transpose multiplied by B plus some residual term B subscript I. So here I'm telling you how one observation has been obtained and don't forget if I take the first, if we, if we very quickly um, 1, 1, 1, x1, x2, xn and just denote these as x2. Just remember if I take the first row of these This becomes a vector, and of course by default vectors are written as columns, 
So to make it clear in the notation that I want a row, I have to write x transpose. And then b is just a number of slope coefficients. I could equivalently write this out as b1 x i1 plus b2 x i2 and so on, all the way through to b p x i p plus the residual time. So I could equivalently write this as the sum from j equals 1 to p of bj x i j. All telling us the same thing. And equivalently, I could write that the vector y is the matrix x multiplied by the vector b plus the vector of these residuals e. So we've had to add here a vector of p slope coefficients and an n by 1 vector of these residual terms. And this just tells us the mismatch between the point on the line that we've fitted and the observation that we have. Now the rest of the notation is where the fun starts because I might want to assume something here is random and start fitting statistical models. So instead of fitting lines to some set of data and that being the end of the story, I want to fit a statistical model and make a statement based on that, that data set but about some kind of larger population. Here's where the notation gets important. So if I use the first expression that we had. I now have a capital Y and I have an epsilon. So what we have, exactly as before, we have a vector of fixed terms X, but we now have beta, a Greek symbol, telling us that this is a population parameter. We have an uppercase Y telling us that this is a random variable, and we have a Greek symbol epsilon <coughs> indicating that this also is a random variable. And this is known as the error, and in some statistical contexts, these are, this is a vector of P unknown population parameters. And again, as before, we can write this in different versions. I could, if I wanted, have said that y sub i is beta 1 x i 1. Um, I could even have just written that as beta 1. We agreed most of the times x1 is going to be equal to 1, plus beta 2, x i 2, plus beta p, x i p, plus epsilon of i. I could also have written that that was the sum from j equals 1 to p of beta j, x i j, plus epsilon. But, although this looks similar to the previous, this is now a model, and errors are something very different to the residuals, although we do hope that what we observe in Y can be thought of as realisations of these random variables Y. The fun starts if we think we want to write this out in some kind of matrix notation, because... I now want to write that the random vector y equals fixed matrix x vector beta plus a vector of errors epsilon. 
and of course the trick in the notation is how do I know whether that's uppercase because it's a matrix or uppercase because it's random and the notation lets us down a little bit here but the key thing to note in for our purposes to start with y is only ever going to be one observation per individual so we can write the model in these terms but it's starting to get little untidy or the notation's ambiguous anyway this is still an n by 1 vector this is still an n by p matrix this is still a p by 1 vector and this is also an n by 1 vector now the next thing we're going to do is actually observe some data and we then want to estimate these parameters and various ways, two ways we could we could write about this um, we could say that we have an observation y is equal to xi transpose beta hat plus a residual and the various different ways of writing that or we could write and say that y hat of i is xi transpose beta hat so here we're writing to say that we now have an observation of a random variable and an estimate of the population parameter and we're either saying you know there's your observed value or here we're saying that's the point on the line that corresponds to this observation and again we can write this in vector notation if we want y hat is x beta hat plus a vector of residuals or we can write that y hat is x beta hat and as before these have the same dimensions this will always be n by 1 sorry this will be n by 1 this will be n by p this will be p by 1 and this will also be n by 1 ok so to conclude some of the smaller ideas we're using y or y depending whether it's a random variable, a realization of a random variable, or a data point to refer to the variable that we're trying to predict, explain, that we'll spend ages arguing about that nomenclature. We're always going to talk about the matrix X, and this will be of order N by P. This is of order N by 1, so we have n individuals and we have p columns in x one of which is usually going to be an intercept column so some people might say that we have p minus one explanatory variables in x now that's the kind of detail of the notation but here's the more conceptual stuff whenever we use e vector e or e subscript i that's a residual get residuals with line fix epsilon is an error and we get errors with models epsilon is a random variable this is just a feature of a line fit b is just a slope term in a line fit. Beta is a parameter in a statistical model unknown to us and therefore fixed for the moment. Beta hat on the other hand is an estimator and this is a random variable and I guess one of the key things to watch out for is not to muddle line fits with parameters with estimators of parameters
and to know which time we're referring to which of these. And equally, although they look very similar in the formula, we never want to muddle residuals and errors. And if we can hold on to that notation and really understand, check, um, and get get used to using this notation and really appreciate that it matters, that tiny little hat there really does matter. You'll be okay with most of the conceptual statistical ideas that underlie regression modelling.